three to five milligrams depending on the age of the patient. If the patient is over 60 or looks weak, in our unit we start with one milligram, go on to two milligram, and then if necessary, increase it. At the same time, can so start one milligram, kill one milligram donicum, see how the patient's tolerating. If it's okay, fine. If not, then we double it. And then, so it's graduated. Um, standard monitoring we do like this too. If uh, I am certainly very skeptical about the use of midazolam going beyond 5 milligrams to 10 milligrams and then to 15 milligrams and then to 20 milligrams as seen. And actually written in the, on the report as well. So what I gave low days is 20, 20, 15 days. This kills so much. If you're going to embark upon them, you need to know that you should have antidote of both the medications. You should have enough resuscitation facility, facilities in case the patient was to collapse. Um, so this is what we do. I told you about antiperistaltic drug. We use atropine because Luxotan is not available here for us. And Glucosan is very expensive. So we usually just use atropine, the one uh, ampule mix it in 9 cc and then we use 1 cc of that. Uh, I don't think I, I've ever used more than 3 uh, shots of atropine. Mostly I don't. I've got used to it. I really am. I shut myself from the movement. I just need to see the ampule. As long as I can see it and it's moving, I know it. Quite often it's moving towards me, which is great. So how much activity is happening? Well, it doesn't matter. You follow monitor. Everybody is going to be different. There is no fix. I can give you atropine. It may not do anything to you. And I may give him one CC and he may shoot up to 140. So every patient is different. So when you're given one CC, obviously if somebody is tachycardic, then you have to be careful. Um, so when I say tachycardic, I'm talking about 110, 120 weeks already and you're giving atropine. So you just need to be careful. Um, but most of these patients are stable when we are doing them. So it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, if you're going to be using propofol and our unit only an is good. Yeah. In which case we have the whole, everything is ready there. So intubation, you know, we, you, we don't have time when the patient collapses. So you can't say, oh, where's the laryngoscope? Oh God, I need this kind of I say, you know, that everything should be there. So, if it has come, generally speaking, we ask them, yeah, which is the Dado, which is Tamari, I think you're doing it, circuit, hai, yeah, or some paralysis, etc. Especially in patients who look very ill or who have comorbid. Because you only have a few minutes and you can't be running around saying, oh, oh, dawa la do, oh, kar do, kar do. And that happens because when you're doing endoscopy, nobody takes it seriously. So, I've seen some people using propofol without any stress. They are brave people, I can't say anything more. I've seen people uh, using MP. Uh, Americans do like, you know, anesthesia to use pain meter, like in non anesthetic resort use. Yeah. No, they use, in, in uh, Khalid's ward, there are four endo nurses, uh, anesthetic nurses, and four nurses require one consultant. So one consultant can manage four, but these endoscopic nurses are fully trained for everything. And yeah, 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 intubate and, and, and they, 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 all their patients are intubated anyway. Because they use MAC and they've got complete patient is set. When the patient is set, all done, that's when they are called. They just go and put the scope, do the case, come up. Okay? Always listen to your anesthetist if you're going to use propofol. I don't even wait for them to say anything. I, at the moment, my anesthetist starts moving a little bit. I uh, stop. I say, is everything okay? Why? Because any status ka kaam hota hai, ke, aram se hote. When they start fiddling around, that's when I start getting worried. Because I don't want to be blamed. Okay? Uh, especially if the patient is not intubated. Saturation drops. You need to monitor. The fact that any status is doing makes no difference. Patient is yours. Nobody will remember the any status. Patient, patient will, will be remembered as Dr. Saad Niyazi said. So you need to have that standing if you are going to use general anesthesia. Just don't leave it on my, I, my anesthetist knows. 
They can't move. The moment they start moving, I stop. What's the problem? So, I wanted to touch on sedation. Uh, I think it's very important, important we haven't touched on consent. Uh, it's very important to explain the risk. Give your own figures. Don't quote Harvard. Don't quote Mass General. Don't quote Khalid Hassan's figure. That's unfair. You say, I have my pancreatitis. Pancreatitis risk in ERCP is 3.2%. Okay, great. Patient to you, will you see me is that what is your risk? If it's not, then why are you telling the patient? Tell the patient what your risk is. Keep your log. Know what, what's happening with your patient. Tell them. When was the last time the patient bled? When was the last time you perforated? There's no point hiding your capability. Give that patient the choice. If he thinks you're not good enough, then let him go somewhere else. At least after suit to me fine over. It's just a matter of time. It's only like a few years. People are gonna start taking all of us to court. I'm telling you this.